Holy cow, your boy's back. With a nice coffee to boot. Okay, so the market's going for a crazy and has had a crazy, crazy solid ride. And uh, I haven't been posting. I'll be honest, I haven't been posting in the past couple of weeks just because I've been working on a few projects which I will go over later on. So we've got a slightly new setup for this as well. I've got a little slide deck to just go over some of the market updates, share some of my thoughts, and uh, let's get into it. But before I actually do it, it'd be great, greatly appreciated if you could leave me a like down there in the video as well as your boys coming back and hopefully coming back with a few more videos. Okay, so first thing on the market, whoops, let's make myself a little bit smaller there. All right, first of all, let's not forget about the meme stocks. The meme stocks, guys, have come back with a vengeance. And how crazy Reddit has gone just as an investing forum for people to visit for some ideas and just for a bit of humor as well, especially myself. I've definitely been on Reddit a lot more, I'll be honest with you guys, on the uh, Wall Street bets and also ASX bets for us Australians as well. Um, absolutely hilarious and also some solid things just to see what people are looking at and have been investing in. But basically, as the market has gone down, look at all the stocks that have gone up. We've got the meme stocks coming back. Don't let your memes just be dreams, okay, boys and girls? GameStop has gone up to over $100, which you can see there. It closed out about 101 USD if market closed, and AMC rallied over $10, but then cut back just over $8. Now, some of you might guys might be thinking, why the heck have these guys come back, and what's going on? What's been the catalyst for Wall Street bets to come back and make it in the news. Well, I don't know if you guys actually saw, but there was an interview that Charlie Munger had. And if you guys don't know, it's basically, you know, Warren Buffett's right-hand man. And if you guys haven't seen it, here's the video, just to give you guys a little bit of context. It's only a little small snippet out of the entire thing, but let's get into it. And the frenzy is fed by people who are getting uh, commissions and other revenues out of this new bunch of gamblers. And of course, uh, when things get extreme, you have things like that short squeeze. It's not generally noticed by the public, but clearing houses clear all these trades. And when things get as crazy as they were in the event you're talking about, uh, there are threats of clearinghouse failure. So it gets very dangerous. And it's really stupid to have a culture which uh, encourages as much gambling in stocks by people who have the mindset of racetrack, racetrack betters. And of course it's gonna create trouble, as it did. And I have a very simple idea on this subject. I think you should try and make your money in this world by selling pe other people things that are good for them. And if you're selling them gambling services where you rake profits off the top, like many of these new brokers who specialize in luring the gamblers in. I think it's a dirty way to make money, and I think that we're crazy to allow it. So you can see from that video that, you know, a few people might be quite offended, right? It wasn't taken quite well, and, well, Wall Street Bets came back and with posts that, you know, had received upvotes for over 75,000 upvotes, uh, which I saw on Wall Street Bets that they're coming back to life and whatnot. You can see why obviously a massive, massive buy-in was had just to, you know, show big money that, you know, Wall Street Bets, we're here to play, all right? We're here to stay and we're here to play. Um, and to kind of stick it to Charlie Munger as well. Not that I think he cares, to be honest with you guys. But with the prices where they are, you can see obviously in particular AMC, there was definitely a lot of profit taking going down from you know 10 to 11 there, back down to about $8. Same with GameStop, um, but I guess not as much as you probably would have seen in AMC given the share price is a lot cheaper um, to get in at. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's either good or bad Wall Street bets. I mean, in any market there are winners and losers, so you know, you play at your own risk. But if you have taken profits out, congratulations, good stuff guys. Um, and if you're still holding on, keep holding on man. You got some strong ass diamond hands, baby. Just keep holding on and hanging for the ride. Because you never know if it's going to shoot back up to three to 400 for GameStop in particular. Okay, so next thing on the topic is obviously the market correction that we've seen. So obviously there's been a slight market correction. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a correction because it's not officially a correction and for those of you guys who don't know, um, the official correction number is that the mark stock market has to fall by 10% for it to be an official market correction and by 20% uh, for an actual recession. For, right? So those are kind of the definitions that we have out there in the economy. 
But what's interesting to me is that there's all this crazy news about a, a, a correction coming about, the market's falling, look at the dip and whatnot. But if we have a look at the overall chart for the NASDAQ, well, I mean, since 2017, look where we've gone. And the, the tiny, you know, correction that we've had recently is just the tiniest, tiniest of blips in there. I mean, over time, we've doubled and quadrupled if you in particular if you got it in 2017 just even if you got uh, an ETF that covered the whole stock market in general it really hasn't moved anywhere at all and it's just a minor blip now look let's take an extreme example if you don't believe me right look at the Rony Rona when it hit in 2020 right that that was a crazy one in a hundred lifetime event and even then even at that moment the, if you got it at the very bottom it was still higher than parts of 2017 and 2016. Just think about that, okay? That is insane to think about that. You know, even if you bought at the very bottom, it was still higher than what you could have bought at 2016, 2017. And basically, it really only, you know, teaches us the same lesson that I guess we all kind of known is that time within the market beats timing the market. So even if you got at each of these bottom dips here, uh, dips there in 20, uh 2019, 2020, um, little corrections here and whatnot, it doesn't really matter because over time, even if you just dollar cost average your way into the best company or even just into a general S&P 500 ETF, well, you would have gone up over time and would have made your money. And you know, like the quote says, time in the market beats time in the market. So guys, sometimes I just feel like saying, don't try to time it and just have a set amount that you want to invest over time, but obviously keep some cash on the side to take advantage of these dips, just to make yourself feel better as well as an investor, but to also financially benefit your portfolio. Now, if you're unaware as to why the correction has taken place, well, basically there are certain fears that the interest rates have been going up over in the US and well, there's not fears like it actually has been slowly creeping up over in the US and also the bond yields have also skyrocketed to an all-time one-year high. Now, why is that a concern and what does that all mean? Well, basically, when the bond yield is uh, going up, it's generally an indication that there are bad things that are going to happen in the economy. And in this instance, it's that inflation is going to be a thing and also fiscal policies um, are being questioned, uh, especially by big institutions who are starting to buy up these bonds and wanting to buy something a little bit more safe and secure. Now, however, I need you guys to remember that these are only indicators and they are only, I guess, perceptions of things that could generally go bad within the economy. And just because they're perceptions doesn't mean that it will actually come into reality. Like, let's say in the US, right? We had, what, trillions of dollars printed during the Rona, Rona period and you know, for me and many others out there, we would have thought that inflation would have just skyrocketed through the roof. We saw what happened in Venezuela. And is this going to be Venezuela 2.0? Well, basically it didn't happen because the basic, basic essentials, basic needs, the prices of those things never really went up. The only thing that actually inflated was asset prices because all that money was being printed and given out to people basically was taken along with lower interest rates and went straight into real estate or either went straight into the stock market because, well, there's zero trading commissions now, okay? So it there was a reduced barrier to entry for a lot of things from real estate with lower interest rates and no trading commissions for stocks. And that's where people piled in because they wanted to take advantage of this period, which they couldn't have had in 2008 because yeah, they just were. But yes, with all this money being slushed about, where is it all going to? And uh, if we look at some of the recovery stocks, I think we found ourselves the answers. Okay, let's look at three of them here, right? We've got Win, Win Resorts. Winning Resorts, whatever you want to call it. Okay, they basically hold a ton of real estate and some of the biggest hotels around the world, and in particular, um, in Vegas and whatnot, okay? Those, that stock has gone up quite drastically. Now, if you bought it even post you know, Rony Rona period, it was at $70 a share or so, and now look at it, it's almost doubled that amount, okay? So they're gone up quite drastically. We look at Spirit Airlines, they they also took a big hit along with all the other airlines, like American Airlines and whatnot. They also have gone back up as being one of the bigger um, domestic flyers in the US as well, and gone up to, I guess, all-time highs. It's pretty, pretty crazy, actually, if you think about it. Boyd Gaming. Um, now they have a lot of you know gambling machines and whatnot. Um, so you call it gaming, gambling, whatever you want to call it. They've also gone back up. So a lot of these recovery stocks, you know, they're yeah they're going back up and they're coming back, baby. And it's funny to say because basically what this is saying is 
I think a lot of people are quite bullish on vaccine news coming out and basically because va vaccine news is coming out a lot of people are going to be taking vaccines and they're going to be flying over to Vegas going to enjoy some wind resorts going to enjoy some gambling so a lot of these recreational recreational plays are coming back onto the market and it's kind of kind of interesting to see the rotation of money that's going everywhere with that being said though do I see a market crash coming along well look we've got a slight little mini correction and whatnot when that happened, even intraday in some of those periods, basically when the market was plummeting off, um, Jay Powell basically came in and said, hey, look, don't worry about this inflation stuff. We've all got it under control and eased a bunch of fear. And within the same day, market shoots right back up after that announcement is made, right? So I honestly, and I hate to say it, but I don't see like a solid recession or correction unless something comes up that nobody had seen coming um, or if there's further lockdowns. But even then, that just, I guess accelerates uh, technology and everything else that we've been using over the past year um, and as long as that money printer keeps working that Wall Street money gun keeps going yeah yeah it's I don't think we're ever gonna see a crash I don't think we're gonna see a crash for quite some time speaking of which I'm actually gonna buy one of those guns just for this channel because why not just a, bit, a little bit of fun so with that being said though are there any value plays to be had over in the US yes there are in particular one that I'm looking at Palantir, you can obviously see it on a slide. Um, they've taken a massive, massive dip from 40 something down to 20 something. I, I haven't looked at it as of recent, but I've got to do a bit more research um, just so I have a stronger conviction in purchasing it. Now, I did purchase a couple shares just to have a little bit of skin in the game um, as I make the purchase as well, and we'll go in heavier if my conviction stands strong. Um, there was a lot of insider selling, which is obviously a warning sign as well, but I Honestly, I can't give you much of an opinion at this time just because I haven't done enough research to give you an educated opinion or thought. But anyways, so let's look at ASX just because, well, you know, I am Australian and I do still hold shares in the ASX. Have I still been purchasing in the ASX? Absolutely, I have. Now, buy now, pay later. Some tech stocks have been going crazy. They have taken a hit recently as well just with um, some regulations and whatnot that they've voluntarily come out for, with for themselves. But a lot of the stocks have been acting like stocks, right? They've been going up um, rather well, contrary to this meme that I've got going on over here. Um, I have made some solid, solid regains. You're talking double, triple um, in a lot of my holdings that I've had in the past year or two. And so I have been plowing a little bit more money into the Australian Stock Exchange and playing within that. Might disclose, might not disclose what I'm going into. Um, yeah, we'll see in the next coming videos. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below, actually, if any, what what are some of your plays in the ASX or even over in the US? Um, what are you guys looking to invest in, and where are you guys placing some of your money? And I might share some of my thoughts down below. With that being said, though, guys, um, to reveal my news, what I've been working over the past two to three weeks is basically a free investing course. It's hosted on Skillshare. Now, basically, when the market went crazy with GameStop and all the Wall Street bets, I had so many people approaching me just personally in uh, friend groups and whatnot, asking me to talk them through the stock market and honestly sitting down for two to three hours just to explain the basics over and over and over again wasn't a very good use of my time. Um, so basically I said, look, I'm just gonna put a free course on there. Links down below, guys. Uh, it's really for beginners who haven't really purchased a share and is thinking about going into the market or have just purchased a couple shares and don't really know what they're doing but they're just buying meme stocks or whatever the case may be uh, and they really don't know how the mechanics of the market actually works this is the basically the course for them now the links will be down below if you do sign up even if you don't take the course it's going to support my channel heaps it does cost uh, me a little bit of money just to host um, the course anyway so I might only keep it up for maybe two to three months so if you guys do get the chance and would like to support the channel um, please sign up with the link down below if you know anybody anybody out there who is looking to get into investing and doesn't really know what to do or what they're doing and you don't want to waste your time or use up your time explaining it, share this course with them, get them to sign up, get them to take it. It's about an hour and 45 minutes and I it took me a while to actually break down some of the basic mechanics as to why share prices go up and down um, and then actually uh, draw that out in on my iPad here on a diagram so people can understand despite the fact that my handwriting is atrocious. But anyways, guys, that's been the market update. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, shout outs to the Ice Coffee for giving me a bit of energy to run and do this. It's actually been quite entertaining to get back on the camera. Anyways, guys, I'll get you guys later. Cheers.